Hello, welcome to another video in the Cilium series. So in the past two videos, we saw how to deploy Cilium in, uh, in a Kubernetes cluster. In the first video, we saw how to do that on a kind Kubernetes cluster. And in the second video, we saw how to deploy that in a vagrant provision Kubernetes based cluster, right? So this time you're going to look at network policies. So if you remember, for those of you who had been using my vagrant provision scripts, uh, firstly, I was using, initially I was actually using Flannel as the overlay network um, and then I switched to using Calico because, you know, Flannel provides basic core networking feature for your Kubernetes cluster. But what it lacks is uh, the more and more I use, I started using Kubernetes cluster, I started to rely on using network policies to control network access between uh, different services, different resources in the Kubernetes cluster, which unfortunately Flannel wasn't uh, able to provide. So network policies is one of the biggest thing that I will be using in my Kubernetes cluster, uh, but Flannel doesn't support network policies. So, so that's the, otherwise Flannel is easy to deploy. So that's the reason I switched uh, long ago, uh, long back from Flannel to Calico. And if you want network policies, you could choose one of the other uh, CNI providers as well, like WeaveNet. Uh, and in this video, we're going to look at Cilium. So Cilium, apart from providing core uh, CNI features and uh, networking features for your Kubernetes cluster. We can also use it for securing network traffic between resources uh, by deploying, by creating network policies to your liking. And then we will also look at uh, the observability platform for Cilium, which is Hubble. And I think we will do Hubble in my next video. I'll look at Hubble in the next video if, if possible. But for this video, we're going to look at how to use Cilium network policies, how to deploy, how to create and how to deploy a network policy and how to restrict access between different uh, resources in your Kubernetes cluster. So for this, we are going to go to the Cilium.io documentation and docs Cilium add in here. What we are basically going to do is we are going to um, understand network policy with the help of a demo application given in this documentation which is the star wars demo so all we are going to do is just follow this documentation deploy the star wars demo application in our kubernetes cluster and then deploy some network policies and see how we can restrict uh, the network connections between the parts all right so what we are going to deploy here is the star wars demo which consists of a deployment with two parts and these two are just a part and then we will have this Death Star deployment created. We will have this TIE Fighter pod created. We will have this X-Wing pod created. And there will be a service for this deployment as well. Okay, so those are the four resources that will get created. And you can see here, so we're gonna run this command. By the way, I haven't got my Kubernetes cluster set up, uh, so which we will do first, right? And then we will run this command, which will create the Death Star deployment, which is this one. And then there's the service for Death Star. So this deployment is exposed as a service, Death Star. And then we have two pods. So these are not, these two are not deployments. They are just the pod. And we're going to see how these pods communicate with the service and how we can block one pod from communicating with the Death Star service by uh, creating network policies and so on. Okay. So for this, we need a Kubernetes cluster with Cilium deployed, which is what we're going to do right now. Okay, so let's create our Kubernetes cluster. I'm going to cd to play directory. I'm going to git clone my Kubernetes repository. For this, uh, I'll put a link to my Kubernetes repository in the video description. cd to Kubernetes and then to Vagrant provisioning. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to edit this. Um, I just don't want to deploy Calico because my Vagrant provisioning scripts by default deploys a cluster with Calico. So I'm going to go into bootstrap kmaster shell script and I'm going to comment out these two lines. Okay, so that's done. And now I can do vagrant up minus minus provider libert because I'm on a Linux host. Right, so once this command completes, uh, we're going to be having a Kubernetes cluster with a master node and two worker nodes without a CNI. And then we will deploy Cilium on top of it. And this one is going to take about four to five minutes. So I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's done. All right, so the command completed. It took four minutes and 45 seconds. Um, I'm gonna make the .cube directory under my home directory and um, scp kubernetesadmin.conf file from the kmaster to 
dot uh, cube directory as the password is cube admin all right so if i do kubectl cluster info so we have a cluster kubectl get node so we have three nodes uh, none of which are ready which we know it's kind of expected because we don't have a cluster networking installed kubectl get ports dash a yep so as expected the core dns ports are all in the pending state so until we deploy a cluster networking overlay network uh, it will remain in the pending state so which is what we are going to do right now okay so if i do which cilium i already have cilium um so i'm not going to repeat myself again here in this video if you watch uh, one of my previous two videos, I've explained how to download Cilium. It's all in the documentation, uh, but I have Cilium installed from my previous setup. So now we're going to deploy Cilium in our Kubernetes cluster. So Cilium install minus minus version 1.15.1. Okay, so it has auto detected our Kubernetes based on our kubeconfig file. It is deploying Kubernetes, sorry, Cilium in our Kubernetes. So if I do Cilium status okay status check failed because it is being deployed so there are errors and warnings which you can ignore for the next few seconds okay it's been 20 seconds let's check the status now cilium status okay cool so cilium is okay operator is okay so we have a working cilium deployment in our cluster if i do kubectl get nodes now they're all in the ready state kubectl get pods dash a Cool, so everything is in good shape now. So we have a blank Kubernetes cluster with Cilium deployed. So now let's go back to the documentation here. Let me increase the font size a bit. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to deploy the Star Wars demo with the Death Star being uh, the deployment and these two are pods. And we are also going to expose the Death Star deployment as a service. So everything is done by just running this kubectl command. So copy that and then paste it here okay so deployment service for that star and pod for tie fighter and x-wing deployed and it's all being deployed in the default namespace so if i do kubectl get all in the default namespace okay so we see containers being created for that star and tie fighter and there's the service for that star okay so that's the cluster ip service okay so kubectl get all Okay, so everything is running fine. Let's go back to the documentation. Okay, so we've done that. So um, the deployment servers are all running fine. Okay, so we are looking at the Cilium network policy. So now we don't have any network policies. So if I do kubectl get Cilium network policies, I don't have any Cilium network policies deployed. Let's check in other namespaces as well. Okay, so we don't have any Cilium network policies deployed. So you could also do CNP as a shorthand for Cilium network policies. So we don't have any network policies at the moment. Okay, which means so this pod can communicate with the dead store service, and again, this pod can too communicate with the dead store service. But by design, the Star Wars demo. Only pods with the label org equals empire should be able to connect with the Death Star service. And this pod, where the label org equals alliance, shouldn't be able to connect to the Death Star service. But given we don't have any network policies deployed at the moment, both these pods can communicate with the Death Star service. So that's what we're going to take a look now. Okay. So what we are going to do is before deploying the network policies, we are going to check the current access, what sort of access we have. Right, so first this command here. So what we are trying to do here is from within the X-Wing pod, which is this one, X-Wing pod, which is which should not be able to connect to the dead star service. From within the X-Wing pod, we are running the curl command. We are sending the post request to the dead star service uh, in the default namespace. And this is the standard um, DNS name for a service in a cluster. So cluster name followed by svc.cluster.local and we are sending the post request to the service to the path v1 slash request landing okay so let's run this command from within the uh, uh, in our kubernetes cluster it's going to run the curl command from within the x-wing pod okay so let's run that and what we are getting is a response back from the dead store service which means our x-wing pod can successfully communicate with the dead star service and get a response back okay 
and the second one is again the same command but from within the TIE Fighter part. Okay, paste and you get the response back. So the moment we don't have any network policies and both these X-Wing part and the TIE Fighter part uh, can send request, post request to the Death Star service and gets the response back. And now let's do some layer three and layer four network policy. So what we want is, what we want to achieve is this one here. So any part with the label org equals empire, I mean the class TIE Fighter part should be able to communicate with the Death Star service on the port 80, on the TCP port 80. So TIE Fighter should be able to communicate with the Death Star service on TCP port 80, whereas the X-Wing port shouldn't be able to communicate with the Death Star service. So that's what we're going to, we're trying going to achieve using Cilium network policy, okay? So this is the policy that we are going to deploy. Okay, so there's the description here, and this resource is of kind Cilium Network Policy V2, and the endpoint selector. So this section here, the endpoint selector section, specifies to which resource this network policy is being applied to. So if you see here, this endpoint selector is being applied to any resource that has the label org equals empire and class equals death star. So you can see here org is empire and class is dead star. So this Cilium network policy is being applied to this resource here. Okay. And um, so what type of network policy we are deploying here? We are creating an ingress uh, based network policy. So which means we are restricting the incoming connection. We are creating, we're not creating the network. We are not attaching this network policy to these pods. Okay. We are attaching the network policy to the dead star service. So we are restricting who can connect to the dead star service so it has to be an ingress network policy okay so we are attaching the network policy to the dead star service by this section and then we are restricting who can connect to the dead star service so that's the ingress which is the incoming connection so the incoming connections can only come from any ports that has this matching labels so org equals empire so any resource where it has the label org equals empire is allowed to connect to the Death Star service on the port 80 using TCP protocol. So that's what this network policy means. Okay, so org is empire. Okay, so org is empire, org is empire, and class is TIE Fighter. So we're not bothered about the class label here. So if you compare these two parts, the org label, uh, the org is empire for this TIE Fighter part, org is alliance for the X Wing part. So based on our policy, it's only this part. That can communicate with the Death Star service and that too only on the TCP protocol uh, on port 80 because we are restricting to which port on the Death Star service it can connect to. So it can't, although the uh, although the TIE Fighter port can communicate with the Death Star service, it can't communicate with ports other than port 80 on uh, protocol TCP. Okay, so that's what this one is about. Okay, now let's create this Cilium network policy. Copy that, paste it. So that is created and the Cilium network policy is called rule one because you see here the name given to the network policy is rule one. kubectl get C and P. So now we have rule one. kubectl describe Cilium network policy rule one. So you can see the policy. So endpoint selector is this one. So we have the ingress from endpoint. Any parts with the label org equals empire are allowed to send request to the Death Star service on protocol uh, using TCP protocol on port 80. So that's what this rule is about. Okay, so now let's do the same testing again, which we did previously. Okay, so from within the TIE Fighter pod, okay, we're going to run the command, the same command that we run a while ago. So ship landed, that's fine because we're sending the post request from the TIE Fighter pod, which has the label org equals empire. So by default, that is allowed okay so we just tested this connection here which is allowed so now we're going to test this connection which shouldn't be allowed by this network policy so we're going to run this command from the x-wing part and you see here it hangs which means the network policy is blocking the incoming connection from the x-wing part to the death star service okay so this is layer 3 layer 4 uh, type of network policy that we deployed that applies to this uh, dead star service that restricts connection from the ports based on the label okay 
So that's the layer 4 policy. And the next example here, we're going to use the layer 7 policy. Okay, so what you're trying to achieve here is, so we've already blocked uh, the connections coming from this part. So we are only allowing connections from part where the label arc is empire. And now we want to go a step further and we are going to block at layer 7. What we want to achieve is we don't want uh, any put requests. So we are allowing incoming connections from the TIE Fighter part, but we only want to allow the post request on this path. So we are specifying, we are restricting which uh, HTTP method is allowed. So in this case, the only HTTP method allowed is post. So we are going to uh, deny the put method. And we are also going to restrict which path the method is allowed. So we are sending the HTTP post and that too to a specific path. So you can restrict the path, you can restrict the HTTP method and so on. And again, from the previous rule, we already have this uh, part, the connections from this part completely blocked out. And we are going to allow connections from this part, but that too, only on this post method and that too for a specific part, okay? So first, before applying this network policy, layer seven policy, blocking the put request, let's now run this command and see what happens. So we are sending, from within the TIE fight report, we are running the curl command to see if we can send a put request to the dead star service on this path, v1 exhaust port. Okay, so let's run that command. So we're getting a, a panic, which means this dead star service wasn't actually designed to handle the put request. So it kind of, you know, it's kind of looks ugly and messy to see this uh, error here. So instead, what we could do is we could just deny the put request so that our desktop service doesn't have to deal with the put request, okay? So now the policy looks like here, it's exactly the same as the previous one. So up until this line here, it's the same policy and we are going to add just another uh, section here, rules section that says, it applies to the HTTP request and the method, the only allowed method is post and that too to a specific path. So we are specifying what is allowed here, the method and the path and to which request it's allowed, HTTP request. Okay, so we're going to deploy this one now. Okay, so if I do kubectl get cnp, we have rule one, kubectl describe cnp. All right, so it's exactly the same as before. So now we have the rule here, HTTP method post and specific path. Cool, so now we'll go ahead and do our testing. So the first testing is the TIE Fighter, which is which should be allowed and we are sending the post request. So that's the valid request, okay? So we are testing this connection here from a valid part, a valid uh, HTTP method and a valid HTTP path. So that's what we are testing now. Okay, copy, paste, ship landed. So the dead star service accepted the connection, it responded back, so that's all fine because that's a post request coming from the TIE Fighter part, which is allowed. So now we're going to do uh, the same thing that we did previously where we got the uh, the go routine error, panic error. So now we're copying that, sending the put request to the dead star service. And now we don't get that panic, so we get the access denied error. Okay, so that's kind of working fine. And again, just for the completeness sake, we are just going to run this command, which will be completely blocked and it will just hang there because the network policy is blocking the network connections. Okay, so I'm gonna press Control C. Cool, so that's about it. So this is how you create uh, the network policy to restrict connections between your resources in your Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so I think that is it for this video and let's do this cleanup here. Okay, copy the first line. So that's going to destroy the Star Wars demo that we deployed. So the two pods, the Dead Star deployment and the Dead Star service. And then we will delete the CNP. Okay, so kubectl get all. Everything is gone. Let's also delete the Cilium network policy, that's gone. It's also to vagrant destroy minus F. So again, thank you so much for watching this video. That's all for this video. And I will see you all in my next video. The next video is going to be the Hubble UI, the platform, the observability platform using Cilium. All right, see you all in my next video. Until then, keep learning and keep on learning. Bye-bye.